All right, so we've already talked about dominant and recessive genes. Let's see what happens when you pass it on to your offspring. We'll just stay with tall and short plants because that'll make it easier. Let's say that this plant is crossed with this plant. Homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive. What kind of possible offspring can happen? Well, what we're going to do first is what is called a Punnett square. We're going to figure out all the possible children that could come from them. Well, with this parent right here, all you get is a big T or a big T. That's the only gene they can pass on. And this parent can only pass on these genes. Well, what are all the possible children that can come from that? Big T, little t, big T, little t, big T, little t, big T, little t. These are all the possible children that could come from that parent and that parent. Let's try another one real quick, and then we're going to look at them in detail. Let's say we have this parent crossed with this parent. Well, the Punnett square shows the first parent can only give B, big T and little t, and so can the other one. So the possible children, big T, big T, big T, little t, big T, little t, little t, little t. Little t. Here are two examples of Punnett squares. Let's go back to the first one, in which we had homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. You'll get to practice one of these in a minute. But notice tall, 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 tall. They're all tall. In this case, heterozygous with a heterozygous. Tall, tall tall, short. The, you have no offspring that were short up here. You have people that carry the short gene. As a matter of fact, they all carry the short gene. But the dominating, the dominant gene covers it up. The only way that you get a short here is because the carrier and the carrier, mom and dad, actually passed it on and you have a child that could get it. Now let me explain this very carefully first. This does not mean that if this plant and this plant were to have offspring, you're going to have four of them that look like this. Every time they have an offspring, there's a chance here. Better example here. When this parent plant and this plant, parent plant get together, that doesn't mean that I'm going to have one tall, two talls that are carrying, and then one short. That doesn't mean if they have four children or four offspring of plants, I'm going to always have one short. That does not always happen. That is because of these two terms. Phenotype and genotype. You need to make sure you get these words. Phenotype and genotype. Phenotype. Physically, what do I see? That's what phenotype is. Physically, what do I see? And that's the important word, physically. And I use that word because phenotype and physically start the same way. Genotype, on the other hand, is what is in the genes. What is in the genes? And I'll give you a second to make sure you get both these definitions because I'm going to erase them and we're going to apply them. All right, let's see what the phenotype and genotype are for these two Punnett squares. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to abbreviate phenotype, genotype, phenotype, genotype. Phenotype. What do I see? Well, the only thing I can see in plants is tall and short. Well, let's look at the offspring. Dominant gene first. How many tall do I see? One, two, three, four. I see four tall. How many short? None. That's the phenotype. Genotype, what's in the genes? Well, let's start with homozygous tall. Anybody big T, big T? None. 
in the gene. There's none of those. Next, how many heterozygous, which big T, little t, one, two, three, I see four of those. And then short, I see none. Now let me explain the difference between these. Physically, what do I see? I see four tall plant offspring. None of them will be short. When I look at the genotype, the genotype is what is in the genes. Pure tall, mixed tall, pure short. One more time. Pure tall, I don't have any pure tall. Mixed tall, I have four of those. Short, none. See what we get for this one. Phenotype of these four offspring. How many tall do I have? One, two, three. There's three of them that are tall. Short, I have one. So I have three tall options, one short option. In the genes, pure tall, I only have one. Mixed tall, I have two of them. It's what's in their genes. And pure short, one. What we can't see very well is inside the genes. We can see the phenotype very easily, but getting it in the genes, seeing it in the genes, is going to be a little bit more difficult. So when you take a Punnett square, you're looking to see what do I see physically and what do I see really in their genes that they can pass on. Now let me say this once again since I have all of the information here with this Punnett square. What this does not mean is if you were to have this plant and it were to have four offspring, you're not going to have three tall and one short. What that means is whenever that plant makes seeds to have a new plant, there is a three chances to one chance it's going to be tall. Sometimes you'll see it in percentages, 75% to 25%. It's the same thing. But there's a 75% chance I'll have a tall offspring. But there is a 25% chance it could be a small. If I wanted to look at the genes with these numbers, there's a 25% chance here. As my pen dies, 25% chance here. 50% chance in the middle. And then a 25% chance that I'll have one of those. And so every time they have a child, these percentages are true. When you talk about humans, it's very, very similar. Let me explain. Women are XX, males are XY. Please pause the video and write that down. Women are XX, men are XY. All right, let's see the Punnett square of what happens when an egg and sperm come together to make a human child. Well, mom can only give an X in, a, in one of her eggs. Dad can an X or a Y in sperm. What are possible? X, 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 Y. X, 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 Y. Those are all the possible offspring. Now I see that it's shaded a little bit, so let me move it over a little bit. Redo that real quick. X, 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 Y. Mom can give X's. Dad can give X's or Y's. Children, X, 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 Y. X, 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 Y. Phenotype and genotype. Phenotype. Physically, what do you see? I see two girls. Two boys, two and two. In the genes, two girls, two boys, it's exactly the same thing. So what determines whether you're going to have a male or female? It's going to be the male. He, is, he can produce sperm that have X or Y. The female does not do that. Even though in history, Henry VIII had multiple wives trying to have a son, it had nothing to do with his different wives. It had everything to do with the sperm that we're actually fertilizing. And so what actually happens is this. Every time you have a child, it is a 
50% chance of being a girl and 50% chance of being a boy. The next time you have a child, it's exactly the same percentages. It doesn't change. That's why in some families they can have boy, 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 all in a row, and then a girl, and then a bunch more boys, because every single time it's like flipping a coin, 50% chance for girl, 50% chance for boy. That's how it is in humans. That's what those percentages meant over here when we dealt with tall and short plants. We pass on genes from adults to offspring, and it's a percentage on what could possibly be our offspring. 